Hi, this is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and the topic of today's video is why I like acoustics that have a bolt-on neck. Uh, this is a Seagull that came in a few days ago um, because the action was high on it, and um, you know the owner wanted to see what we could do to reduce the action. Well, so I have a video uh, that I'll link in the description about how to determine if a guitar uh, needs a neck reset, but I'll kind of cover the basics right here. Um, first thing that I did was I checked the nut and, um, you know, saw that the nut is uh, pretty low. It's not a whole lot of space there. And so that's a pretty healthy height above the frets. It's not worn out, but it's got a little bit of something above the fret height. So that's, uh, that's good. It's not necessarily um, worth it to try to take out any um, string height down here. Having checked out the uh, neck relief, which is the slight forward bow, that a healthy neck has, um, I'm seeing that you know, it's hanging around a nice healthy neck relief um, somewhere between 9 and 12K. I think we're dealing with 12K in this case. I usually like to set acoustics to about 12K just because it's a little bit, a little bit heavier uh, and uh, some people really wail on these guys. Some people like different relief. Moving on. Um, the uh, next thing that I looked at was the saddle because this is normally what will primarily look at as adjusting the string height. And um, when you get to the point that you're seeing a saddle that's pretty low, like this one is, and you're seeing a bridge that's pretty low, like this one is, like this isn't, this isn't a lot of height on either of these two things here. Um, we kind of run out of uh, material that we can remove. Um, kind of a good rule of thumb is that um, whatever you're shooting for here, you have to remove very consistently um, kind of a little bit of an adjusted twice that amount down here. And uh, so, you know, if this is like a 16th of an inch too high, which it is in one of these cases on either the treble or bass side, I can't remember, um, you know, we just don't have the amount of material on the saddle to remove without the saddle kind of dropping below the top of the bridge. And so, um, you know, we can't we can't take that out of here with the guitar in the condition that it's in. Um, now, all of that being said, um, if we were talking about like a Martin, or we were talking about like a Guild or a Gibson, or something that had a traditional dovetail neck joint, um, I would have been talking to this customer about maybe trying to get a little bit more life out of this thing before doing a neck reset by maybe planing down the bridge a little bit. Um, kind of sketch on whether or not I would have suggested that in this case just because the bridge is so low on this instrument. Um, but that would be one thing that you could do to kind of avoid going the neck reset route on, a, on uh, one of those guitars because resetting a dovetail neck joint is a hugely invasive um, kind of traumatic procedure um, for a guitar to go through. It involves a lot of hot steam, heat, um, and it's got to be done exactly right. Um, or else what you've glued in there is a neck that's gonna have to immediately come back off again using the same procedure. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of hairy. Um, um, doing neck resets, I will admit here, is not one of my favorite jobs. Um, I like getting them in, I mean, it's, it's good money, but um, uh, I don't like having to work around uh, pressurized steam um, just because usually when I do a neck reset, I go home with you know some burns, some amount of burns on my hands or my arms. Um, just because it's steam, it's hot, and, um, you know, those things are very um, dynamic jobs where you're moving stuff around and stuff kind of moves because you got to pull that neck off and then you got steam shooting at you in this direction or this direction. you got to keep on mopping up all this water that comes, that builds up around here. It's just a big ordeal. That being, all that, all that explained can kind of give you an idea of why it might be better to have kind of a different... Um, more easily adjustable neck angle. And that's where these bolt-on necks come in. Um, Seagull, uh, Taylor, Collings, um, and I think, I wanna say Garrison guitars. I think those are the ones that have like the, the um, I'm kind of in a head fog today because I haven't had much to eat, but I think those are the guitars that have those uh, fiberglass skeletons on the inside. Um, 
you know, those are guitars that have a bolt-on neck design as opposed to one of these uh, dovetail neck designs. And um, what that means is that instead of uh, having something like this going on in the neck, um, there's a little bit of a chip out of this one just because it's a cheap Stella. And um, this neck here um, was made with a knot right here that I found as I was kind of working the heel on this thing. I have that piece and I'm going to be gluing it back in, but I'm kind of annoyed that that was used. Um, you know, it's a budget guitar from back in the 60s or whatever. Anyway, moving on. Um, so, you know, this thing is the kind of thing where you typically have to like, um, you know, stew a, do a steam job to get that neck removed. Whereas this guy here with these bolts, which I'm going to show you here, I can just go in and I can undo those bolts and uh, the heel of the neck comes loose. And uh, when I say the heel of the neck, what I mean is this part here, because this is the part that needs adjusting when you do a neck reset. What happens is basically that you're taking off kind of a very long triangle of material that's wider down here and pointed up here so that you can kind of kick that neck angle back just a little bit. And what that does is it changes the string height up here. It changes what this is going to have to be set at, um, but it enables you to get a nice low setup on an acoustic guitar that, um, you know, has aged a little bit and uh, where the neck has shifted and moved. Um, all acoustic guitars are going to need a neck reset at some point, which is why I think that it's an extremely intelligent thing to do to, to put this type of neck joint in a guitar, because just all of these guitars are going to need it at some point. And this just makes it so much easier, less traumatic on the guitar, less traumatic on the repair person, and less expensive. Um, this guitar is going out of here for like a bill that's under 300 bucks with that's including like the setup and doing the neck reset on it. And I can tell you that it would be a hell of a lot more than that um, if we were doing more work to it with doing like a steamed neck removal. And it would also take a long time. I'm going to be able to get this guitar back to this customer within like a week, um, which is awesome. I love being able to get something out that quick, whereas if we were doing a steam job on this, it would involve a lot of time kind of sitting around clamped up, um, dehydrating after all of that steam had been injected into the body and, you know, going through this process of, of uh, kind of getting to the point where I could even start the neck reset on it. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it just takes a long, long time. And... Uh, you can see where I'm going with this, guys. Like, um, this is a this is a thing that's being done on high end guitars now. Now there are people out there on guitar forums and whatever that will tell you that there's some kind of uh, tonal benefit to having that dovetail. And you know what? Maybe they're right. I don't know. I can't say for sure because you'd have to have two completely identical guitars, and you'd have to like hook them up to like an oscilloscope or something where you could really just look at the sound waves very carefully. And even then, you'd have to like have all sorts of controls in place to kind of compare and contrast those different tones that you're getting. What I will tell you, as somebody who's been working on these things for like 20 years now, is that like I don't think that there's a noticeable difference between guitars that have these bolt-on neck joints and guitars that have the uh, traditional dovetail neck joint, aside from the fact that these are way cheaper, way quicker, and way easier to work on, and um, generally a better time for both the repair tech and the player. Um, and, you know, I think, that, I think that it would be cool if more companies could shift towards these. And it may be something that you want to keep in mind, too, when you go out shopping for an acoustic guitar, um, that, you know, your maintenance down the road um, may be more or less expensive, depending on, you know, whether you want to have that classic Martin with a dovetail neck joint or whether you want something that's a little bit more modern, like a Callings. And I mean, you know, if it's good enough for Callings, like, I, I would argue that, you know, it's, it's plenty good enough for, you know, every player, honestly. I think that, uh, I think that, um, folks who have kind of a, a hesitancy towards this kind of design um, may have kind of a prejudice that um, needs to be explored a little bit because I don't think that uh, I don't think that um, the bad rap that these get sometimes is deserved and I and I really think that it um, 
I, I really think that it ignores a lot of very positive benefits that come from this sort of neck design. So um, that's kind of like my little mini rant for today on, um, you know, bolt-on necks versus uh, dovetail necks. Um, I will say, honestly, that um, there are many, many fine guitars out there that have dovetail neck jo uh, joints, and I'm not trying to talk you out of buying one of those. Um, like I said, it may be a consideration for, like, costs down the road, but, you know, if you've got the money to cover it down the road, um, you know, don't worry about it so much. Um, grab the guitar that you like. Um, but, you know, if that may be a concern for you, maybe something worth thinking about. Um, anyway, um, this has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. If you like this video and you feel like kicking me a few bucks, there's a link to my Ko-Fi and my Patreon in the description. Um, if you thought that this video was cool, um, there are many more like this on my channel, and you can check those out and link them to friends. Uh, I'm really trying to build this channel up, and uh, it's doing pretty good um, so far. And... Uh, uh, also, in that description, there is a link to my reverb page where I do sell some uh, some guitars that have been fixed up. They're used guitars that have been gone through thoroughly, like frets have been done, um, nuts, saddles installed, all sorts of upgrades and stuff usually. Not the cheapest used guitars, but pretty good used guitars. Um, and um, also, uh, there's a link to my website where you can find my pricing page and my contact information and uh, everything that you might need to get a hold of me in case you're in the Seattle area and need some repair work done. So anyway, this has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. Thank you for watching.